नमस्कार वेलकम टू आर स्पेशल रिपोर्ट ऑन इंडिया ग्लोरियस जर्नी इन द फील्ड ऑफ स्पेस एक्सप्लोरेशन आई एम भावना नैया India today is universally recognized as a global space power. It is a distinction we have achieved after overcoming a number of challenges with tremendous self-belief and unflagging dedication to achieve a vision. Our report today will recount this space voyage, revisiting the many missions that marked the confident work of a developing nation towards self-reliance and global recognition. Year 1963 on 21st November a fishing village Thumba in the state of Kerala marked its place as India's space center by putting a Nike Apache rocket into space the rocket was intended to probe upper atmospheric regions and support space research a church was fashioned into a launching site nearby cattle sheds were turned into laboratories and storage units Bicycles were used to transport payloads and rocket parts. This colossal effort overcoming Herculean odds heralded India's arrival in the global space community. 5,4,3,2,1,0 The trip that started from a fishing hamlet in Thumba progressed decades later to a mission to planet Mars that India landed in its maiden attempt. It cemented India's place in space power. India has made remarkable progress in space launches, operations, technology, development and commercial satellite launches. With the passage of time, the Indian space program has carved robust and comprehensive standard operating procedures from launch to landing. A journey that started with robotic satellites is now aiming at sending manned missions. In the works are plans to develop a space station by 2030. India's Space Exploration Agency, Indian Space Research Organisation or ISRO was formed in 1969. Today, the agency has a lot to celebrate in terms of achievements. I'll be peppered with hits and misses. So, I'll start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. In terms of milestones, since the 1960s, there have been 129 spacecraft missions, 84 launch missions, 13 student satellites, and 342 satellite launches from 34 client countries. India has 53 operational satellites in space, providing various services to the nation. 21 of them are communication satellites. 8 are navigation satellites. 21 are earth observation satellites and 3 science satellites. See when we started the space program in 60s uh Americans and Russians were already on the moon and we were just look trying to just trying to build the, the first of the rockets with the help of uh, US French and the Russian support small sounding rockets now today if you look back uh, in history then we see that from that small beginning we have reached a level which is uh, having capability to build our own rockets and launch it from our own soil build it our own our own satellites and have applications that will touch the life of every indian today isro launches 5 to 7 satellites every year although it still has a long way to go compared to some countries In 2019, while the United States launched 19 satellites, China and Russia had 25 and 34 satellites. In recent years, India burnished its credentials with its space vehicle Mangalyaan 
entering the mass orbit in its maiden attempt. Early 2000s, they planned Chandrayaan 1 and um, they were successful going to the moon in the very first go. They were also successful going to Mars for, with the Mangalwa Mangalyan 1 mission on the very first attempt. Um, so, and right now, um, there are many, many countries in the world, 200 or, or more, but just five or so um, have the capability to. Uh, go to Mars. Having the capability to launch uh, such a mission to Mars is really remarkable. Achieving a journey of almost a year through space, precisely reaching the Mars and orbiting Mars, like uh, throwing a basketball from India to US and falling it perfectly in the basket there. So precision, such a precision in terms of uh, mission is really a landmark. Work is underway to launch the much-awaited manned Gaganyaan and Chandrayaan-3 missions Today, ISRO is globally recognized for building and launching cost-effective satellites, lunar probes and taking foreign satellites to space. India's uh, space program has done fantastic progress in many different parts of uh, what I call space operations, space launching, space uh, uh, technology development, including now uh, launching commercial satellites. So uh, they have a very robust and very uh, excellent program, uh, I, I would say, from launch to landing. And uh, this is uh, certainly a splendid and spectacular achievement for a country in the last 75 years. India's space sector economy is valued at 7 billion US dollars, that is 2% of the global space industry. In a global space industry currently valued at about 450 billion US dollars, India is planning to achieve a market share of over 10% by 2030. By 2040, India expects to expand it up to 1 trillion US dollars. There are many steps that are to be taken. The first and foremost is you need to create a market within India as well as outside for space-based services and product. And this is very important. And second is that we need to have larger number of actors in this space sector. It cannot be done by a single agency, the space agency of ISRO alone. It has to be done by many industries and partners who will be able to build and develop and operate systems on their own. In terms of budgetary support, the government started with an allocation of 15.76 lakh rupees for the Department of Space in 1973-74. It went up to rupees 1700 crore in 2000-2001 and Rs 13,700 crore in 2022-23. This huge leap is just one indication of the seriousness of the government in promoting the space sector. Along with the Azadi Kamrit Mahatsav, India is also celebrating the pioneering space explorations undertaken by ISRO. In order to unleash its true potential, the government has over the years and through several policy interventions made conscious efforts to bring more players into this sector. To inspire young entrepreneurs and students in the space sector, STEM, that is science, technology, education and mathematics has been promoted to teach students the basics of space technology. Keeping the big picture in mind, the government is also promoting space tourism and space diplomacy. The Indian Space Association launched in 2021 is part of that exercise. In a radical departure, the association will encourage private players, act as their apex body and will be the collective voice of the Indian space industry. The Indian Space Association was formed to build public-private partnership. Its preamble aims to make the nation self-reliant and a global service provider. In a heartening development since 2020, 60 startups have registered with ISRO for various fields in the space sector. 
including space debris management, nanosatellites, launch vehicles, ground systems and many more. ISRO has also created an autonomous nodal agency in space that is the Indian National Centre for Space Promotion and Authorization for the purpose. The agency's mandate is to enhance participation of private companies in activities related to space science. In space is acting as an important enabler to help startups reach the global space market. Private sector ke participation ko facilitate karne ke liye, desh ne in space ki sthapna bhi ki hai. In space, space sector se jude sabhi maamlo mein एक सिंगल विंडो इंडिपेंडेंट एजेंसी के तौर पर काम करेगी इससे प्राइवेट सेक्टर के प्लेयर्स को उसके प्रोजेक्ट्स को और गति मिलेगी द इंडियन स्पेस एसोसिएशन आल्सो एनहांस द रोल ऑफ न्यू स्पेस इंडिया लिमिटेड दैट इज द एनएसआईएल दैट इज मैंडेटेड टू सपोर्ट ट्रांसफर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजीज फ्रॉम पब्लिक टू द प्राइवेट सेक्टर व्हाट वी आर लुकिंग एट इज नॉट कंपटीशन वी आर लुकिंग एट कोऑपरेशन as far as isro is concerned we are not threatened by any of these new actors coming in i think there should be no doubt on that purpose the purpose is that we need a huge economy which is operating in space sector please look at the uh, an example i'll tell you suppose a space industry is developing tens of satellites in india who will launch them it is the rockets which we have already developed will launch them so it brings in business for the rocket people and the rockets will be built in the private sector as well so it again builds adds to the overall value chain and if you are able to use the data from the satellites for remote sensing for the global community you have a still higher business possibility so all of this are for the good of our space sector new space india limited has transferred 78 technologies in the past 2 years so far the department of space and isro have transferred nearly 400 technologies to more than 300 industries across the country another area of concern is space debris Space debris includes both natural meteoroid and artificial that is human made orbital debris. Orbital debris is any human made object in space that no longer serves a useful function. Such debris includes non-functional spacecraft, abandoned launch vehicle stages, mission related debris and fragmentation debris. According to NASA there are approximately 25000 pieces of debris larger than a softball orbiting the earth they travel at speeds up to 17500 meters per hour fast enough for even small pieces to damage satellites or a spacecraft the government is working on a massive scale to tackle the problem india has 103 active or defunct spacecraft and 114 objects categorized as space debris it has come up with a technology system for safe and sustainable operation this facility will support all routine operations safeguarding indian space assets mitigating collision threats from space objects through specific collision avoidance maneuvers there is a need to look at control of traffic and control of uh, inter in, interagency and interdepartmental co coordination to manage this debris one by knowing where is a debris so that you can do it care and take care of this 25000 numbers second is to minimize debris in a, in a controlled manner by cooperation among nations so that we bring in leg legislation and agreements between nations through the un mechanism so that you don't create additional debris don't conduct experiments in space which will cause additional debris creation deorbit satellites which are already operating and their life is over how to bring it back prevent explosion of rocket stages in space so that they don't add to space debris space sector is capital intensive to ensure sufficient funds for missions space com policy 2020 allows for space companies to leverage fdi norms to encourage foreign investments in india's private space sector india also continues to take part in international collaborations through the united nations and brics nations as well as new ventures with israel Japan, NASA and European Space Agency. Uh, NASA's JPL laboratory, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and ISRO are conducting a NISAR uh, mission which is a uh, radar looking or a synthetic aperture radar mission that's going to study Earth's uh, 
uh, surface, look at Earth's uh, changes happening on the surface to help us understand how we can understand the processes of our planet and also learn about how the changes on the surface of the Earth are going to be impacting not only uh, India or US, but the entire global population. Let's tell you about all the major milestones achieved by ISRO in the last five decades. All this and much more after this short break. You stay tuned to Sunset TV. Welcome back after the break. You're watching our special report on the Indian space sector. The evolution of the Indian space program since 1963 is an inspiration to the whole world. Since its humble beginnings, Space Agency ISRO has achieved several milestones. In less than six decades, India has become a world leader in space technology and exploration. The program that began in 1962 under the leadership of legendary Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was then a part of the Department of Atomic Energy. It was an era when the United States and the then USSR dominated the space sector. Dr. Vikram A. Sarabhai, the founding father of Indian space program said, technology is not an objective to be aimed at, but a tool to be used for the benefit of the common man. Space-related activities in India started with the setting up of the National Committee for Space Research in 1962. This was followed by the Indian Space Research Organization, that is the ISRO, in 1969. ISRO led its epic journey with a single objective, to serve the nation. The journey offset India's dependence on other countries to build and launch its satellites. India's journey in space started um, in the late 60s, early 70s. And if you, if you remember, it is around that time, uh, NASA and Russia uh, landed on the moon. Uh, for NASA, it was the human landings. For Russia, it was uh, many uh, unmanned landings, the Sputnik spacecraft. So India had a late start, but um, the Indian Space Research Organization um, um, uh, attracted very talented people like Abdul, Dr. Abdul Kalam and many, many uh, famous scientists. Today, ISRO has many global clients. The accomplishments of India's space agency speak for themselves. They include an array of launch vehicles to put into space, indigenous satellites and related technologies for Earth observation, communication, navigation, metrology and space science. Some of the important initiatives of ISRO include the Indian National Satellite System that is the INSAT for communications, broadcasting and meteorology, the Indian Remote Satellite sensing series that is the IRS to support the national economy in areas like agriculture, water resources and forestry. Also importantly the development and operationalization of the polar satellite launch vehicle that is the PSLV and geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle GSLV for not only India but also to put international satellites into space. India has also achieved milestones and important space exploration initiatives. ISRO built India's first satellite, Aryabhat, on April 19, 1975. It launched the Chandrayaan in 2008. ISRO's 100th space mission used the PSLV C-21 rocket on 9th of September 2021. Its Mars Orbiter mission also known as Mangalyaan, was India's first interplanetary mission in 2013. Mangalyaan uh, was a very impressive uh, uh, mission that India not only designed, formulated, and uh, launched and operated. And it, is, it shows, uh, in, in my view, personally speaking, in my view, it shows the uh, 
three capabilities that India's space program is maturing very fast. India has the expertise, both scientific, technological, and engineering to be able to mount such a mission. And number three, the India can accomplish these things within the budget and the schedules that the country's uh, leadership has uh, allowed this road to, uh, to do. It also had the first dedicated Indian astronomy mission in 2015 AstroSat. On 15 February 2017, ISRO launched 104 satellites in a single rocket, PSLV C-37. The first successful launch of PSLV. I still imagine it on my eyes because I was working there and after the failure of the previous mission, making a PSLV launch successfully is one important mission which I have seen. The very first launch of GSLV, uh, which went successfully, again is a landmark moment. And my own GSLV Marthri, which I was a project director to do its first mission as an experimental mission uh, in 2014, again a landmark moment for me. I, I believe that Chandrayaan-1 made a big you know, step in our ability to launch a probe to moon using our uh, PSLV, one of the most reliable but very simple launch vehicle to do such a mission, complex mission, is really a landmark. The Indian story of space will not be complete without mentioning its pioneers. Scientists like Vikram Sarabhai, Satish Dhawan, R. Aravamudan and U. R. Rao have brought the Indian space industry to where it stands now. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was ISRO's top scientist who later on became India's president. In 1984, Indian Air Force pilot Rakesh Sharma was the first Indian to fly to space. Pardon leader Rakesh Sharma. Sari Rasht ka dhyan aap ke taraf hai. Aur hum sab aap ko badhai dete hain. Yeh ek itihasik kadam hai. Meri aasha hai ki isse humara desh antariksh ke prati jagruk hoga. He was on board the former Soviet Union's Soyuz T-11 that went to space. Other notable Indians who made it to space were Kalpna Chawla, Sunita Williams, and Rajachari. Indian space industry is expected to expand five times in the next five years. There are long and short term goals. The ultimate goal is to make India a leading partner in global space. The space sector is witnessing a big boom. The government is planning to transform the space industry. Its first goal is to bring in a space policy. The policy is expected to, among other things, outline the possible roles for private companies in space missions and grant them access to ISRO-owned facilities and services. The next step is to make profits through space tourism. ISRO is in the process of developing indigenous capabilities to create infrastructure for space tourism. For India's ambitious astronaut mission, the Gaganyaan mission would be a demonstrator mission. ISRO has successfully conducted a static fire test of the boosters that will power India's maiden astronaut mission. Two more scientific missions, Chandrayaan-3 and Aditya L1 mission, are slated for next year. Although ISRO has not yet confirmed the date. Evolution of India's space program has been systematic, very progressive and very thoughtful. In my personal view, I believe that they have moved from uh, a very good early stages of uh, robotic satellites, robotic missions, now to uh, uh, human spaceflight missions where uh, they are building uh, capabilities to launch uh, Indian uh, uh, astronauts in space very soon. Uh, they have built the capabilities, the capsules that uh, are being tested right now. So uh, I think that capability is going to give India a a very invaluable path to developing a space station of their own. Various other future missions are currently in various phases of development. ISRO is also readying a spacecraft to orbit Venus to study what lies below the surface of the solar system's hottest planet. It is expected to unravel the mysteries under the sulfuric acid clouds enveloping it. The last six decades journey of the Indian space program have been remarkable, but there are still miles to go. The coming years promise to be not only eventful, but also path breaking. 
With the space industry getting wider and the young scientists coming in, India is hopeful that in the next 25 years, when it celebrates its centenary year of independence, it will be in a more commanding position in the global space economy. That's all we have for you in this special episode. We'll be back with much more. Till then, goodbye. Thank you for watching Sunset TV. Namaskar.